Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah on this life to day. day. Welcome to day 10 of 120 days. Um, laboring in God's word and prayer. He said those who suffer with me will reign with me. And to count it all joy we need to multiple trials and tribulations. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad. In the kingdom, say greetings, spiritual seekers. Uh, just rising and just I'm at peace in my life. In Christ Jesus. Seeking Christ Jesus, a deeper uh, relationship with God. In prayer and His Word. That not my will or our will be done, but thine will be done here on earth. As it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, I glorify God today. Just riding it. One of the things that God is, we have to do in Christ Jesus is begin to cast down everything that exalted itself up against the knowledge of God in the carnal mind and begin to allow the spirit of the living Lord uh, to permeate throughout our thoughts to where it is subdued. So I'm riding. Now I know God is chastening my flesh and I got my flesh on the altar. Because here lately, it seems like the older I get, the short-tempered I get. And the least little thing that I that I feel, which is I has got to go. And I, that's why I've been praying to God on the altar. That's what I've been putting on the altar. Uh, my flesh and that I got to go. That I see people by according to the word of God. So I constantly seek the word of God. And God has been, he's been um, revealing um, a, a lot of wonderful, delicious, consuming bread manna into your sister girl's spirit. But I'm riding. And I'm going to tell you how I say the, the corner of mine is. I'm riding. I know my flesh is on the altar. And I know what God I know God has given me my menu. I'm just sitting up and just thinking about all kinds of. I'm gonna tell y'all, when I stopped eating meat, I became a junk food eater. Uh, and I began to consume more starch than I should have because I was eating nothing but basically fries. And, oh, I love macaroni and cheese, and I was trying to trying to steer away from that. So I'm just sitting there, I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh yeah, that, that, oh, I'm just thinking about my mind. And I don't, I don't with the agreeing with the thoughts in my head. Oh, I was like, oh yeah, you know, get some uh, good old, uh, cause I like dip. I, I can make some good dip. I was like, oh yeah, and I already just had some, knowing I was not supposed to have it. Yes, I'm not gonna lie, I had some. And uh, I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be real good. And then I just all I caught myself. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I'm gonna lay that on the altar. So as I go into prayer today, I just I'm just come to usher my sisters and brothers in Christ and to just lay that one thing that so easily beset you, that's keeping you from walking in the will and divine uh, commandment of God according to His Word for us. Cause I want I want to see. Um, Jeremiah 29 and 11 to manifest not just in my life but those whose lives are around me and connected to me because there's a spiritual inheritance that God has for um, his children and um, I'm seeking, I'm not just seeking for the spiritual inheritance, I'm seeking for a deeper relationship with Christ because God has given me so much great information he's given me um, breaking generational curses and he's beginning to show me different curses that's, that how they're using curses biblical contents to cause curses uh, because it's about like a two way street you can either use it for uh, good and evil and some people have an evil tent and they'll try to send it out over your life as evil but what they, what, you, what they fail to realize what God told me is he says I allowed them to do that to you so 
things so that you can grow in Christ and know who you are and know the authority that you have. And so, uh, that very thing that they did or have done and sent that of your life, now send it back in the name of Jesus. Because he's, he's, he's allowing us to exercise our authority in the name of Jesus. So, because uh, I, I was some, um, some warfare had came up against me. And it was almost to the point to where death. And I'm like, God, I don't want to put, I, I know life and death lies in the power of the tongue. I don't want to put death on them. But Lord, you got to help me on this. Because I'll tell you what, I want these people buried. And God, we were going through, he's ministered to me. And he said, that so whatever a man saw that he shall reap. And if you kill by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And the sword is the word of God words that you're speaking out of your mouth because the words that come out of your mouth it comes as a two-edged sword and it is powerful enough to cut and, and to, to literally take your life so he says you send that word back to him in the name of Jesus send everything back to him every curse back to him in the name of Jesus and you begin to pull up uproot every seed and everything that they have planted in your life that is choking life out of the um, the seeds of growth and fruit that I'm trying to produce out of your life and you learn you gotta learn how to begin to cast down in the name of Jesus so today as we go before the throne of grace I just pray that God will open our enlightenment our minds our hearts that we have that we are able to receive and have an ear to hear what thus says the Lord as I was riding up the road you know the altitude changed because I stayed somewhere in the mountain but it's almost like the valley and I had to go up and then it kind of like even itself out and my um, my ears began to pop and I was like golly what's going on with my ears it's, it's like they was being plugged up <sighs> and God just began to allow me to see that the altitude not only just in the um, natural but in the spiritual realm is beginning to shift because he says, my sheep know my voice. And he, and you know, we have spiritual hearing. And we're able to hear within the spiritual realm. We're able to see within the spiritual realm. We're able to smell within the spiritual realm. And sometimes I could be somewhere and I could just smell a stench. Um, I'm going to tell you one time something happened. And a fire broke out. I'm in a whole nother area. But I smell nothing but pure smoke. And I'm like, golly, something is burning. What is burning? And then come to find out, I turned on the news and it had been a fire. So it's been several occasions to where um, I have literally sent something in the spirit and smelled it in the spirit and it was and it actually had manifested within the natural. So today, God, in the name of Jesus, I magnify your holy and righteous name, Father God. Jehovah Jireh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for you are our provider, Father God. Jehovah Nisi, Father God, you are our strength, our banner, God. Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to abide under the shadows and the wings of the Almighty, Father God. As you cultivate us, Father God, and allow us to grow in you, Father God, as you, begin, as you continue to download your wisdom in our spirit, Father God, that your word will come out of our bellies as, as living water, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for the man of God, Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ, whom you have set over us, Father God, to be a God, Father God, to un undergird us, Father God. And I pray as he pour into us, Father God, that you give a word that we may help strengthen and prop him up, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I glorify your name in this place, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I glorify your name, God. As his arms get weak, Father God. That we will prop him up on each side, Father God. I glorify your name. I thank you, Jesus, for his life, Father God. That you are renewing him in his mind, Father God. That he's allowed to be that he's allowed to stand firm in your word, Father God. Now, Father God, I pray that he'll submit his spirit into your hands in the name of Jesus. Father God, I ask that you search our hearts, Father God. Try our thoughts, Father God. And see if there be any wicked way in us, Father God. And lead us not into, into thine way everlasting. Creating us a clean heart, oh God. And creating us a wash us with hassle, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I glorify your name in this place, God. Thank you, Father God. As we begin to become submissive, Father God. Unto your word in the name of Jesus. Hanadaboshiya. Yeah, 
Yes, God. Any foul spirit that is not like you in the name of Jesus, God. That any spiritual wickedness that is grown within the spiritual realm in the name of Jesus, God. I glorify your name in this place. I bind up spiritual wickedness in high places. I bind up principalities, Father God. I bind up powers of this world of darkness, Father God. I bind up rulers in the, of this world, Father God, that is trying to do spiritual manipulation, Father God, over your saints, Father God. For you said that you did not give us a spirit of covetousness. You did not give us a spirit of fear, Father God. You gave us a spirit of love, peace, and that of a sound mind, God. And I pray that your love begin to permeate through your people, God, as we become united as one within the body of Christ, Father God. I glorify your name in this place, God, for you are so worthy, Father God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Every deceiving spirit in the name of Jesus. Ooh. That's a foul. Now, in this time and season where we're living in, people have a tendency to use people to signify their authority and power power here on earth and that is a form of witchcraft what they're doing is they're walking in the spirit and they step into your position and they believe that when they step into your position that you now take on their image that you now begin to mimic their ways and that is false doctrine that is a form of witchcraft and that is a form of that is a form of spiritual manipulation. It's more of voodoo than it is witchcraft, but, but witchcraft is like it puts you under a it's like a spell. It puts you under a spell. And then that's when voodoo began to um, take place because voodoo is more of, of a, the controlling um, essence of witchcraft because it actually makes you in a transparent state, not in your right state of mind, but in the mindset of those who desire to control you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Holy Ghost, for that divine, for that divine revelation, because it had to come from no one but you. Because I'm not, you guys, whatever God birthed out of me, I've never ever read it in a book. You cannot find anything that God birthed out of me in a book. And I'm, I'm so grateful that God saw highly a little wretched one sinner like me, worthy enough to birth out his revelation. And you know, the thing about it is when I go to God in prayer, that's what I ask for. And they're like, I'm not asking for no cars. I'm not asking for no houses. Because God says, don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. If I fed the birds of the air and the beasts of the field, and I consider you a little Lord and the angels, how much more worthy are you to know that I, I shall provide for you? And I don't want highly desires to step in the way of God's will. So, even with me, I'm not, I'm, I have a place, a dwelling place that God prepared for me. I'm dwelling under the shadows of the wings of Almighty. And I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes my belly just went well. Like, God, I don't think I want this a house. Because I remember when I was young, a young thing, and I used to walk the roads. We had, we stayed in the house. But you know how you all young, you always looking over there at somebody else's grass. Somebody's. It's not that I was looking at that grass. I just, when I said when I got older, I don't think I wanted was a house with a fence around and a little, um, and a little playhouse in the back. That was my life coming up. And sometimes I do want to wheel out of my belly. So I said, no, God, I don't want these things of this world because that shall fade in the name of Jesus. But I know that your word is everlasting, God. And I desire not my will, Lord, but let thine will be done in this place. And God began to drop into my spirit. And the tragedy that's going on in Louisiana, Tennessee and all these places where these winds, the wind has came and blown um, these people's homes away. God, God, 
again he let me have one glimpse he said one minute it'll be here the next minute it will be gone it is the word of god that surpass, surpasses all understanding that shall stay because that very thing that god blew away because god has already been trying to strip she, he is judgment his god's judgment is upon the land in the name of jesus but god don't orchestrate evil he'll take his hands off of you and he'll he'll will allow it to come in your presence for trials trials and testing the testing of your faith in the name of jesus so when i begin to hear and i begin to see that the storms i would just say god i just look around and i say god thank you i thank you god because be able to wake up and be able to see this day and have breath in my body. So the materialistic things of this world, it does not matter because it too shall fade. But it is by the word of God that is eternal and everlasting that will sustain us in this place. He said that there's nothing that you cannot speak out of your mouth according to his word that it shall not be so in the name of Jesus. And the very thing that has been blown away, the only thing you got to do is to blow breath into blow breath into your life according to his word and it shall manifest in this place in the name of Jesus I glorify God in this place I thank God in this place for all that he has done for me because he didn't have to allow us to be clothed in our right state of mind but he did he saw us worthy enough to be clothed in our right state of mind and that's all that matters that's all that matters in this only life to bring day just magnifying it just I just been thinking about just looking over life I mean just look at this world look at the trees just look at the trees and how he has formed this world and we're so caught up in things that is being blown away I've learned to whenever God if God if that happened let God's will be done because there's no telling what we may have been entangled up in. They know there's no telling who you are connected to has been entangled up in a sinful nature and has brought this calamity upon the land in the name of Jesus. I glorify God in this place. Let God's will be done. Let God's will be done in this place. On this life's a grand Thursday as we get ready to walk into the weekend. A time of restoration, restoration to be rejuvenated in our minds, hearts, and spirit. I just pray everybody have a life to win. Weekend, Labor Day weekend, enjoy your family and friends, and then just just enjoy life. Um, and it says that in Ecclesiastes, go eat bread, be merry, drink wine, and enjoy life. Because he said that's at, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's, it's about joy and love and love and life. Because uh, everything else is all vanity. And it's like chasing out the wind. After the wind in the name of Jesus. Because it, it shall fade and it won't be remembered no more. In the name of Jesus, I glorify God. In this place. Y'all have a life to win. Day. Uh, and anybody who wanted to um, join with the 100 until December the 30th. Just pray. Just begin to lay everything that so easily beset you on the altar. If you know that your flesh is bothering you and you know that you have a, a, a sinful nature, lust and lust, greed, uh, lying, whatever, whatever it may be, just lay it on the altar and let God begin to deal with you with that. And I promise you, you, you would appreciate it. You're going to get a little bit upset at first because you're going to be like, uh-huh. That is not none of me. Really, God? Oh, my goodness. I tell you, when God begins to show me who I am, I just... Really? And I, 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 I break out crying. I would, I would literally break out crying. I just, I just sit down and I can't say nothing because I've learned... At first, I was like... Really? But God began to adjust my attitude. And that's what, in a time, because you cannot burn pure love and joy out of an attitude. Because you're going to get an attitude back. So we're going to.
the left side every way that so we used to set us and that's what we're doing until um, December the 30th in order to be, um, be disciplined and to walk in the things that God has for us just lay down your will take up your cross and follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ y'all have a nice um, Labor Day weekend.